<laughs> hey guys, I know the beard's gone. You're probably thinking, what the hell? Why is the beard? Where's the bird? Why is it? Anyway, um, this isn't the coffee time of Cobra. This is an unboxing. Okay, on my birthday bash. Okay, uh, some I, everyone keeps asking me. No, I am not losing my hair. It's just the way the light is. You can't see. I do have hair. Okay, I'm not losing my hair. Um, but anyway, um, a lot of people on my birthday, during my birthday bash, asked me what my get for my birthday, and. I said that I had ordered me a new 3D printer, which I had, and it's just come. Because, as you can see, one of my printers, the last couple of videos, has had this white box over it. The reason why is because that printer has met its its shelf life. It has been giving me nothing but issues, software, mechanical, you name it. Um, the prints that it's been printing out aren't been the best quality. Uh, and it turns out that um, parts that were inside that one weren't exactly up to scratch when um, they first designed it and spat it out. So they've since then come up with upgrade kits and stuff for it, but I'm not paying. It's only a five inch base and the only thing I ever, ever used to do that thing is print off smaller things, you know, like heads and arms, you know, um, as where the six inch one next to it it does need a new screen uh for some reason i keep going through screens on that that printer um so yeah i've got to get a new screen for that one but this one <laughs> this one's a lot bigger a lot bigger so sharp careful let me just drag it in. This sucker is a lot bigger. And it is by Flash Forge. And as you can see, I was number 45. Number 45 on the back order for this. This exact printer has been out of stock on Amazon five times. So it sells a lot. So this is the Flash Forge Photo 8.9. This is this is a very good entry level thank you phone a very good entry level printer for those looking to get into much larger prints without it breaking the bank i.e costing a couple of grand for a printer of this scale. now one of the reasons why i went with flash forge over voxlab is because voxlab they, they do have printers in this size, but not at this cost. It doesn't mean that the printer is cheaper. And this is your little boxer. We'll look inside that. But it doesn't mean that I went cheap because this thing is not cheap. It's actually quite heavy. And as our favorite Russian always said, weight is a sign of reliability. And if the gun does not work, you can always hit them with it. Name the movie. Uh, oh, this thing is absolutely humongous. And it's the first printer in my collection it uses network it uses a network connection as well as USB so I can in theory just shoot 
the STL file over to the printer and printer go brr. <laughs> it does not necessarily need me to start transferring uh, STL files and other things. This thing is huge and it's heavy. Oh lord, is this thing heavy. But, oh the peel. Oh. I am like a kid at Christmas. No joke, I really am. I'm, I'm quite happy. This is probably going to be one of the best birthday presents I've ever bought myself. Now, I believe this one does come with an active charcoal system as well. Um, if you don't know what that means, that means some resins, especially the cheaper ones, well, the cheaper the manufacturer ones, um, come with bad chemicals. Obviously, as the, the girlfriend says, obviously. Um, and because the chemicals are bad, it has fumes, and fumes are bad. Again, as you would say, obviously. New print bed design. Oh, that's... Divots, that's new. I'm going to have to get a flat sheet for that. Size of this thing. Holy crap. This thing is fucking humongous. Okay, I'm not. Oh no. Oh, these bolts are huge. Everything's huge. Oh, there we go. Is it a hook? Oh, it is a hook line system. Oh, even check. Check. Can you hear? Can you actually hear how tight the sheet? Oh, I am going to leave that layer on. I'm not going to peel that off. In fact, I'm going to leave that screen protector on. So we're going to. Are you back? Oh, it even locks. Look, that, that's that's just how it tonk, magnetically locks into place. Oh, everything about this screams chonky. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, this is. This, this is just... Alright, so put that down for a second. Take the protective layer off. This is just to protect it so it doesn't get scratched in shipping. I've then got to do what every... 3D printer owner does and I put it on backwards. Um, I've got to put myself a little handle on the top. Um, it's one of the things I did with all my other printers is I've got some stick on handles. I'll put some either side and then I can take the lid on and off a lot more easier. Oh, I've got to check to see if there's uh, any firmware upgrades. So I've got to buy a new LAN cable. Because then I've got to run a LAN cable from here to there. Oh. Um, yeah, that's, 
Anyway, it's a dual linear rail system, um, which is what this is for. It's a dual linear rail system, which means you don't technically have to to level it. Um, and of course, we will do a couple of test prints. I'm not a fan of these divots um, being on the actual. Sorry, I'm not a fan of these divots being on the actual test bed itself. Uh, I might have to get some of those magnetic foil over peel off strips just to cover up those divots because if I'm trying to print something and it's over these divots I'm afraid that the print bed might not stick properly uh, also I've got to um, I mean uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do a test print without scoring the base uh, scoring the base is um, would be kind of a cool sound soundtrack to a, a drum and bass song but now uh, scoring the bass is where <clears throat> you agitate the surface of your print bed which is what this is to make it more um easier to adhere to so that your prints actually stick to the bass instead of just being a goopy mess inside your printer so Give me a couple of days to follow up this video with some actual test prints to show you. Um, and so, yeah, you guys wanted to know what I ordered? It's here. And uh, I'm happy as a pig in poop. Oh, uh, let's check out what they came, gave us with the extra box. It's probably just going to be things like a funnel, um, the power brick, of course. Uh, a funnel, um, the basic, simple uh, stuff, you know. So, yeah, we get a, uh, a thing from Flashforge. Uh, please contact us at this email address for that. Yeah, you get the little cheapy thumb drive, whatnot. Power brick, with British plug. Uh, is it a re regulated one? Oh, we'll see. Uh, you also get extra screws, spatulas, so there's extra screws, and the Allen keys. Uh, cheapy gloves that really aren't worth nothing. Um, and the plastic spatula, and the metal scraper. So, never use the metal scraper. Um... And so yeah, that's what you get inside that. I will go through the manual in a bit. Uh, as for the power brick, I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see shite. AC adapter, uh, two amp. So yeah, so that means I've got everything I need to get us set up and um, it means uh, in the next couple of days you're going to see a new complete uh, print set up corner thing over there it's going to be awesome <laughs> okay guys I'll see you in the update <laughs> okay guys I just want to show you the size comparison. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. Oh my god. She's a big girl. Mm -hmm. I thought that the six inch printer, okay, the one on the right here, was the Hydrolon of printers. No, that is the Hydrolon of printers. And if you don't know who Hydrolon is, go play Warframe. You'll know who she is afterwards. Oh. She's my main, by the way. Um, Hydrolon's my main with... Valkyrie beam no yeah hydron's my main um excalibur umbra's my 
second. My third is a toss up between Ash Prime and Valkyrie Prime. Anyway, um, but yeah, Hydron, Hydron's my main, and yes, I will be getting Hydron Prime. Um, I want my buff girl. Okay, she, she's. Oof. Anyway, um, it's up. Um, there is a there there is a um, firmware update for the printer, but unfortunately, it has to be connected to a network. And I do have a uh, USB powered network Wi-Fi card, but the problem with that is it has a different kind of protocols, and it has to be hardwired. Uh, so there's that. So that has to be hardwired in. So I will have to run a uh, a, a, a lang cable over to it, um, and that'll be fun. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have to get me a new LAN cable as well. Maybe a six foot's not long enough. I need it. I need longer than six foot. And um, yeah, that'll be fun. And then that way I'll be able to just zip STL files straight across, straight over, and be happy with that. Um, I'm actually quite pretty pumped because I was told that my printer wouldn't be here till April the 3rd but uh, for some reason it got here sooner and I'm just checking out what's on okay so it comes with Chidu box and it also comes with flash DL print okay all right, all right, all right. let's check out your flash DL not I'm a huge fan of Flash DL, but Flash DL. Let's extract you. And of course, what? Two two boxes. That, oh, it does come on the eight point nine config, so it's eight point. That's way out of date. I am currently using one point nine one two two box beta, I believe. Yeah, one point nine three. That's way out of date. Right, so we're gonna go to setting. I oh, know it's um not wrong settings it's gonna go to main settings and we have already got the flash forge standard resin gray are we doing standard resin gray fine come here come over here this is So this is just a standard, standard resin gray. We'll do it for one point one. All right. Um. Here we go, guys. I'll show you what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing, guys. Let me grab my webcam. Hello, there's my mush. So we're setting up um, software to use with the printer. I like to get uh, Igloo's resin 
um, because oh and my some of my airbrush stuff uh, came today so <laughs> new needle and tip set giggity universal which means they'll fit my airbrushes um, and the t-junction which means i'll be able to have both uh, unfortunately i won't have my airbrush stand because that's one of the things that got stolen out of one of my packages which makes no sense i don't know why good luck using an airbrush holder some e85 cream some oil paints and oil paint thinner so yeah you thieving little shit anyway uh so we're gonna stick with the lcd uh, mirror uh, don't bother with normal or DLP mirror normal. The reason why you shouldn't bother with DLP uh, 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 and just stick with LCD is because that's what your screen uses. It uses an LCD screen. Uh, the normal is, well, just a generic if you're using like... You, you can buy the control boards. You can buy the Z-axis motors. You can make your own resin 3D printer okay, or from off-the-shelf components, but it won't have the correct firmware. So you can put in a basic configuration and then you're going to have to mess around with the mirror. Now I go with LCD mirror. That's fine. These are all stock lock ratios. Leave those alone. Resin, of course, that's our normal resin. Print error. Now this, will all, this is all stock default. Now what I can do is because I have um because i have the actual it's not a new profile where is it it's one of these import profile there it is uh because i have the profile from the manufacturer That for some reason is not showing up. Hmm. Okay, one second, guys. Let me bring that down. Yeah, see, there's the config file. Let's see how, how out of date this software is. Import file. Alright, so that's exactly what I just did, and it didn't, it, it's not working. So we're going to double check that. So settings, import, see, oh, there it is. For some reason it just did not want to work. I guess we leave it as a dot then, under default. Uh, so yeah, that's the G-code. Don't touch G-code unless you understand G-code, which I'm still learning. Unless you truly have mastered G-code, leave this section alone. Uh, AA40, I'm gonna swap that out for, this one is. My Polaris 6 is a better one. Yeah, it's one and two on that didn't it yeah one and twos right there's guides you can get that that will tweak your uh printer and whatnot to be better so but for me that's my proxima six which means i can now get rid of my five because i'm no longer using that printer ripping pepperoni uh mostly because she's getting ready to be used just as a parts uh printer for the six uh the five inch and six inch are, are compatible the only thing that isn't is the firmware and the screen board um so if you if you can find a way around vox labs uh, uh uh lockout and hack the firmware to tell the five it's actually a six and then put you can put a six inch screen on it you just need a new top uh the tops you can get one on ebay for about 30 quid and the screens are about 60 right now the screen because of covid and whatnot screens are a little bit more expensive right now and but the actual trays themselves are the same size the dips are the same size the only difference is the actual you get like an extra couple of like a half inch 
either side that's all it is it's really not worth it so a lot of hassle for not a lot of payback um and for the price you might have just buy the the flash forge for 089 uh, i got mine for 189.99 uh, free shipping on amazon uh, no affiliate links because i'm poor um also guys i'm only 500 uh, 500 i'm only like 10 subs away from 500 so thank you for everyone who's recently subscribed to the channel it does mean a lot to me it really really does you have no idea um and so yeah like i said these are the printers and stuff like that and whatnot now this is our flash forge so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna rename this profile and I'm going to name it uh, Stock Profile from USB uh, 8.9. Right. But I'm actually, all I'm going to do is check it, look at their advanced settings and their print settings. Because here it's saying bottom layer count of 8. Okay. So we go to my flash photo. It says bottom layer count of one. So we can swap that to an eight and we're good. Um, or what we could also do is delete this flash photo, click on add, go to uh, flash, find the 8.9. That's what ours is. That's what it looks like. Mine's just a black one. It, it comes in two colors, black or silver. And yeah, it, hmm. If this is what Chudu Box has chosen, fine by me. But this is what the manufacturer has sent me. So this is where you've got to decide who's correct and who's not. Everything else because they've added bottom rail, lift rail. This one hasn't. I'm still going to run it through UV tools anyway. So I'm going to see real quick with a quick Google search to see if uh, X photo No file format. Uh, okay, so there's one on, on R slash 3D printing. Let's take a quick look. Again, I always like to double check settings and whatnot. And, you know, I've been 3D printing now for about three years now, almost four. Um, so I, I wouldn't consider myself like a true veteran, but I know exactly what's going on. And for some reason, Reddit's not loading up correctly. There we go. Uh, I am more trying to get fun. Get my site and save USB instead of USB stick print. Got to shout out what am I doing? Well, okay. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. okay. It sends up two types of flash forge. Thank you. It's a mobile board. One with a self design mobile board. A self design mobile board will not be able to print FDG files, FDG files, due to proprietary format. So, a self design board will not support it. Do you use the latest cheat? Well, this is definitely going to be the. Chi2 base board 
so I should be good, but I'm gonna leave this up. Basically, because there's two types of ones, there's, you've got the gray one, and you've got this uh, black one. It has an issue with the file format kind of thing. So that would explain the difference in the layer count, because again, they're two different understanding of the boards. So I will stick with the default, because that's what came with the printer, okay? So that's fine. So there's that. And what we can do is we can check is what we can just grab a file. Okay, we'll open a project. Uh, where's my 3D prints? 3D prints, 3D prints. Uh, I'm just gonna grab something, anything. Um, Chaos Demon, where is that? great unclean one there you go ah, okay 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 so open instead sorry 30 down call yourself a professional actually i don't okay so there we go oh that's the wrong one uh, i need to go to cast demons there we go no i don't want one sitting down Where's that one? Grand Chungus, there he is. Uh, I will take this one, open him. And he should fit easy. Loop, there we go. How about that for a first print? Good Lord, that would be insane. Also be a lot of resin, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hollow out the model. Oh no 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 no! We need infill structure. So it says none. You don't want that. You want an infill structure, otherwise your model could collapse on itself, and that's not good. Okay, so yeah. See now it's just gonna be a hollow model. And that can be good, but we're gonna go with a infill. It's gonna render it again the infill now you can see it's got like this lattice internal structure there we go and then what I'm going to do is click here and then I'm going to click platform and then it's doing its smart tech thing to add. I know all, all this faffing about to find out whether or not it's going to print the model correctly. Now there's a few bits of overhang here that I'm not happy with. So we've got your little man titty. Let me suck on that titty, babe. Okay, so we've got one there. It's always good to add a few extra supports, just cause, especially on structures like horns, fingers, things of that nature. And on the back here, you're gonna have some overhangs. So, like so. So these are going to have connect connectors. Let's see, anything with an overhang, you're going to want to add a add a little something, something. So the horns here is going to need a little something, something. Sword tips going to need a little something, something. 
just because you don't want the sort tip to be that way. All right, so there's that. Now, um, click back up there. Click build. Card. I'm going to drag it down. And take a quick look. All right, and then we're going to click slice. This is <clears throat> this is where 32 gigs of RAM. A really good processor and a really good graphics card come into play. And if that reads the file, then I know we are good to go. It's going to take nine hours. So we're going to save it. And I'm going to save it on my desktop real quick. Let it write the file. Again, this is also where having an SSD helps. Now bear in mind, I'm also recording this at the same time, so the recording software is going to eat a lot bit of resources as well as doing the software. The software is going to eat a little bit of resources as well. So, see, so everyone seems to think that three D printing is is easy. It's not. It is nowhere near easy. Like I said, this is the waiting game, so a few moments later. <laughs> it will take a while. Because it's having to take 3,379 pictures. <laughs> That's how a 3D printer works. Is each layer is basically a, a, a JPEG or a PNG, uh, a negative uh, PNG, and so when they throw it through the printer, that's the only light that comes through that cures the resin and the next then the bed picks it up then the next one then the next one then the next one then the next one that's how 3d printers work well resin 3d printers uh, extruding printers they do it from the bottom up uh, 3d printers do it from the bottom uh, uh, from the top down they do it in the reverse of each other you get way more detail with a resin 3d printer and you can be a lot more precise in your measurements externally internally not so much which is why when you are doing prototyping you really want to use an FDM printer for the internals and a resin 3d printer for the externals has been done we can then click close yes I want to quit there's our file right there so what we're going to do is we're going to open up UV tools normally I have it down there but for some reason I can't find it it's fine we'll go to our apps 
UV tools. And watch, there's probably an update for this. Yep, there is. Uh, so one thing I got, I, I do have to give props to UV tools is the software. It is bundled with other 3D printing software and they try to say that they, they have to pay for a license to use the software. They don't. Um, UV tools is free. Okay. There is a donate button that if you want to help the guy over on GitHub, you can, but UV tools is free and UV tools is one of the best tools I've ever used when it comes to 3d printing. Um, this program has actually fixed so many issues I have ever had with 3d prints, 3d printers, uh, just any issues period. Um, like I said, the reason why my machine's a little bit slow today is because I've been doing a lot of video editing and whatnot. So I'm also recording. So yeah, <laughs> give it a few. Stay hydrated guys stay hydrated here we go there's in the UV tools all right so now best thing about UV tools is you can just drag and drop the file in and it's gonna do a whole bunch of scans now what this is doing is this is comparing um, any issues, overhangs, you name it. Okay. Now it's also going to tell me what I need to worry about, like material costs. It's going to cost me three pounds thirty six in resin for this model. So that's the minimum I need to charge for this model in order to make to to, to then shipping and whatnot. So it helps you out with the business side of stuff. Tells me how many layers there is at 0.55 millimeter, 0.05 millimeters. Um, bottom layers is eight at 0.4. Exposure is 25 seconds to 0.25 seconds. Lift is 7.7, .7, 77 millimeters at 90.90 millimeters a minute. And so yeah, this is actually pretty, pretty fast for a printer of its size and it's actually pretty quiet. But what we're interested in is see this little suggestions and animation thing here. You click that. It's going to tell me bottom layers eight is out of recommended out of five layers. So it's five, not eight. Uh, transition layers are 25 point times out of eight. Recommended is 25 to 2.5. That's fine. Uh, recommend before cure is zero, zero. Out of recommended 15.2. Model position is out recommended. It moves the model. So it wants to move, shift the model a little bit and adjust and tweak the times. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all, click apply. Yes. Now it's going to readjust the file. Now this, this program is very RAM intensive. It's already eating up almost three gigs of RAM just to do this. It, it crunches. See, see, it moved the model and that's fine. That's fine. If it wants to move the model, let it move the model. Uh, so, and then we've got a transition time issue. Okay. And that's that done. Now it had to readjust the transition layers. So that's all that done. Now we can click on issues and then click detect. Now, now it's going to scan for overhangs, resin traps, uh, things of that nature. Yes, I know I didn't put any drainage holes in the model. Bear in mind, okay, this is just a test. Okay, I'm not actually going to print this model as is. I'm doing this for this demo purpose. Okay, I'm then going to put it in on the USB stick and over to the printer to see if the printer is going to recognize the file. If it doesn't recognize the file, then I know I've got to do hop over to the Reddit and I'll add an addendum video to this. So like I said, everyone keeps asking me that 3D printing is easy. Is it easy? No, it's not. It's not easy. It is not easy and mistakes are costly 
do not get me wrong mistakes are costly uh especially if it's a long long time print like 12 hours 20 years i've done a print that took me 20 something hours and it looked perfect until i was cleaning the model up and realized i had a dead pixel on one of my screens and it caused a great big tear right down the, uh, the back half of the model so from the front it looked visually stunning it was like oh but from behind it literally looked like someone had taken a lino cutter and gone whooshed, right up the back of the model so i couldn't sell it and so that was resin used electricity used time used which is the key key fact here time was used resin was used electricity was used my printer was out of action because it was being used my screen got damaged so i had to buy a new screen um and, and, and there is quite a lot that goes into ensuring that your prints come out clean crisp and beautiful see everyone assumes that getting a 3d printer means you can just print x amount of minis and now you've got a starting army that's great and all and yes in theory you can do that but you've got to make sure that your files are clean the models are clean uh, your print is good your resin is good your screens aren't there, there's so many factors that go into it that a lot of people don't seem to understand and they're actually quite intimidated uh, like like right now running every single i run every single 3d print through uv tools every single 3d print there is not even even if it's a file that i've already run through uv tools if the program gets updated i run the file through uv tools again because i want to make sure that when i take the file to a printer to one of my printers my printers are going to print that file so I don't waste electricity, I don't waste resin, I don't waste time, I don't, yeah, I, I, because at the end of the day, you want to get it right the first time every time. Learning from your mistakes is great and all, and it, and it is, it's a good thing to learn from your mistakes, but at the same time, I'm the sort of person that because I've made so many mistakes, I now know what might work what might not work i see what are potential red flags in 3d printers and 3d files and and and, and things like that um and again like i said this this file is has no intentions of ever actually getting printed like physically printed okay i'm doing all of this not only for the tutorial but eventually i want to make sure that this printer will recognize the 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 file format to designate to make sure that i've actually got the flash photo forge correct one if i've got the previous model then i'm gonna have to again hop on to the reddit swap out a config file and start tweaking with settings and a whole bunch of other stuff okay we're almost done here it's just doing the resin traps now there's going to be a lot of resin traps i know that for a fact there's going to be a lot of resin traps okay now it's looking for suction cups which is a good thing suction cups is what ruins your fetch screens your FEP sheets. Most people are like, what do you mean? Suction force. Remember, you've got to understand, this is inside a liquid. So when you're moving something up and down when it's inside a liquid, it causes a suction force. This is why when a ship is sinking, you want to get off the ship before the seat, before the ship goes below the water line. Otherwise, it's going to pull water down with it as it sinks. Okay? So yeah, as we can see, we've got a ton of islands, overhangs, and resin it's like i said resin traps because i haven't put drainage holes in the model and that's fine don't care about that. now what i do care about is just going to here save do you wish to output file we have written yes save the file i'm then going to put the file on this thumb drive and then put the thumb drive in the printer and if the printer recognizes the file immediately i know i'm good if it doesn't then and I've got some issues. Okay, so we're gonna close this. We're gonna grab this file. Now, everyone thinks I'm weird for doing it this way. I'm not weird. I just do things the way I wanna do things. So, I don't just copy, I move. I don't copy, I move. 
It's 400 megs, which isn't that bad. Some some 3D print files I've I've tried to move over in the gigs um, because it carries a lot of metadata. metadata. I think there's something wrong with that USB 3 port on the front of my case. Alright. Yeah, transfer speeds are just there. It's probably a USB 2 port that's stuck at that, that that's marked as a USB 3. So no this is not alcohol. And no this isn't a um um a pop or a soda. This is relentless zero sugar. Um, I only drink zero sugar energy drinks. My actual uh, fitness instructor um, recommended me those sugar free ones over the sugar filled ones. And my blood sugar hasn't spiked at all since, since drinking them. Almost done, guys. Almost done. Thanks for sticking around so for so this long. Right, so there's the file. It's in there. And of course, most people will go bub 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 eject. That's not me. I'm just gonna grab it and go. All right, so we're gonna take this over to the new print hub. Got to make some room first. Old print hub. Six and a half inch. Excuse me. There we go. Now I'm going to go back, back, print, uh, USB memory. Huh. It doesn't seem to see the file. that tells me this is the original board okay that just means I've got to work on the file format so like I said guys and that's how you figure it all out it just takes time and to be able to physically do stuff so I'm gonna end the video here and uh, I'll see you in the next part hopefully with a printed model maybe I don't know Hey guys, welcome back. Let me just adjust the camera a little bit. Welcome back. Um, this is the end result. I, I did find a model I wanted to print, mostly because it's a model that I actually wanted to paint. Um, so I get two beds, one stone out the con content. So let me adjust the camera down and you'll see what it is. Uh, da, 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 da. That's right, Space Marine Rhino. Now, um, long story short, it printed the entire thing. Uh, this is a hollow print, so it is a hollow print. Uh, so the fact that it's a hollow print means that it does print a little bit faster than a solid print. Um, but the um, hatch is a solid print and the Chaos Space Marine um, with the Storm Bolter and the hatch is a solid print and they do fit in just nicely to the base of the model right here and so yeah I'm I'm gonna leave the Chaos Space Marine unglued which means I'll be able to tw twiddle them around and, and whatnot but yeah that that's a full-scale full-size Rhino that got printed on the uh, Flash Forge um, 8.9 um, photo and yeah it uv tools told me that it would take uh five and a half hours the printer actually knocked it out in three and a half um the only downside to knocking out prints that quick um you don't necessarily lose detail because there's quite a lot of detail on the model i mean it, it's a space marine rhino 
Um, so it'll be good for doing some weathering, and especially since that's going to be for Nurgle, which means I'm going to get to do some uh, green stuff and a few other things to it and whatnot, and make it uh, uh, more chaos. Um, is the fact that I mean it printed in in under four hours. It, I mean three, it was like three hours and thirty something minutes, but the estimated print from UV Tool said it was going to take about five hours. So I actually had it earmarked for uh, five hours. So I wasn't really expecting this to say just go bink. However, the downside to it printing so fast is the fact that it is a loud son of a gun. I mean it sounded like a PlayStation Four. It it literally just wanted to take off it sounded like a, a, a jumbo jet wanting to take off on me um but the actual printing mechanism quiet as a whisper i could barely hear the 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 platform moving uh, up and down it was the extractor fan that's actually quite loud uh on the vox lab it's the other way around so let me just bring this back up real quick hi um so yeah, the I'm arguing, I'm fine with this damn camera now. Here we go. So yeah, um, the, the, the 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 elephant in the room, <laughs> basically the 8.9, knocked this entire Rhino out in three and a half hours with Gunner and Hatch, and just blew my mind. I originally did it in. Um, the, the original file I did it in uh, 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 Chidu box, um, but on a profile that outputs the file as an FTM file. I then ran that FTM file through UV tools and then exported it as the correct file format for the printer. And technically, I, I'm I'm re-rendering the file twice so it takes a little bit longer there but i i am happy um with the end result granted i am gonna have to tweak the settings just a little bit mainly on the the, the um on the anti-aliasing and the smoothing just to get a little bit more crisper detail out of some of the other models i've got um but I can say with a great big smile on my face for the this is the very first print that that print knocked out for me and it knocked it out the park um, if I was to print this one on my Vox lab which is the smaller one I would have to orientate the model or split the model in two and do a cross sword style print and then find a way of gluing the model two halves together and then yeah because the print bed's just not good enough it's good enough for infantry and bits and pieces i mean heck i printed an entire chaos uh, 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 um, uh chaos knight uh, uh on that six and a half on that small six inch printer granted it, it took me about four days to do it because I had to print the legs separately, the torso separate. But long story short, I feel I'll be able to knock out a Chaos Knight, another Chaos Knight with the 8.9 in probably two days, if that. And dear Lord, it is good, but it is noisy. Like I said, the extractor fan is extremely noisy. Um, I will be, um, getting a new LAN cable and running it and then hooking it straight up and going that route instead of because that way I'll also be able to upgrade the firmware for it because apparently there is a firmware upgrade for it I just haven't for, for the LAN because it has to be upgraded through the, for the LAN cable um, not the USB port so that's actually pretty interesting uh, is the fact that you can't upgrade it through the LAN port only the only that uh, the USB port only the LAN port. Um, that's interesting. Uh, also, like I said, guys, I, I for the first print, I'm then gonna uh, what I will do is tear her down uh, and examine the FEP sheet uh, and see if there's any tension pulling, any issues. 
Um, I'll also have to order some extra uh, FEP sheets in its size for it um, because there's no because I'm telling you now there's no way the FEP sheets I have will fit it they'll only fit the Vox Lab that I've got right now and I do need to get a new uh, screen for the six and a half inch which I will do I will get here next next month uh, along with a new TV because I've already ordered TV and paid for it but it's on back order it's one of those smart wifi <laughs> wifi wi-fi uh um uh smart tellies that's specifically designed to run um with an app on my phone so that i can just go and swipe up and and, and put uh, certain apps and stuff on the tv and watch my uh netflix and stuff on my tally instead of my computer and whatnot which is what i want to do anyway that way i can sit down lay down in bed uh or just you know bung on some Bluetooth headphones and just chill out, watch a movie, listen to an audiobook, things of that nature, you know. But uh yeah, I'm I'm incredibly happy. Um not only with with with, with the model. I mean I bought the model, I paid for the model. Um I, I got it on um Flash it was no it wasn't Colts. I got it on Colts. I think it was like three three euros and change. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's it's it, it's I. You know what? I actually do have another Rhino somewhere. If I find it, I will do a side by side comparison. And I know that other Rhino. I had to scale it down to get it to fit on the six inch. So you'll be able to see what I'm talking about when I said it's a full scale Rhino compared to other Rhino proxies that I use. I might even look at uh, printing me up uh, some Chaos Blight drone, uh, some Nurgle Blight drones, um, maybe even a uh, um, Nurgle Predator or something like that, just to add, add to the army to give the army a little bit more oomph. I've got a ton of dreadnoughts um in in my army anyway because it's following mortar mortarians eighth uh, um they're called the whispering something they're spe they're a siege specialist that specialize in just vehicles um and so they use uh, they heavily use a lot of dreadnoughts um i still want to know why nurgle can't take bikes um it's the only chaos chapter that can't i think I mean, I don't see the point of a thousand sons on a motorcycle. He hits a rock, flies off, and cracks his armor. <laughs> He's dead. You know, um, makes no bloody sense. Uh, but uh, I would like to. I'd like to tweak it a little bit. Also, it means I will be able to start printing off a lot more um, bolt action in Conflict Forty Seven stuff. So I'll be able to do some more realistic German. Uh, allies. I've got two. I've actually got a British and an American starting army uh, for for bolt action. I might actually get those buggers on the tabletop and run them through with some speed paints, and at least just get both armies ready to go. If I have people that want to play a little skirmish or something, so I look forward to seeing videos on that. Um, so yeah, look forward to seeing an update video to this clip where I have both this Rhino that I've just printed and the old Rhino. Uh, side by side and you can see for yourself so guys i'll see you in the next clip hey guys we're back uh i found the other uh, rhino um so let me just adjust the light so it's not so bright there we go i found the other rhino uh now this one as you can see had excess resin on it as it was curing hence that's why this is just a practice a size comparison model versus this one as you can already see there is a a very large scale difference of about two percent three percent and that's the difference printers can make size wise okay now I've got them both lined up by their engines and you can see that this one's much taller much wider um, so yeah uh, <laughs> I I'm actually quite happy uh, with the result because that means I can use both rhinos uh, for my chaos army uh, 
Uh, in fact, I'm even going to be uh, molding my demon ring. And uh, I've got an idea about putting the demon's face like on the front of this one kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, i just got to get the, uh, the two-part epoxy resin and the uh, um, liquid latex rubber mold stuff so I can make a mold of the demon's face. So I can even put this on maybe a dreadnought or something like I did when I lived in the States. But uh, <coughs> yeah guys, there you go. Um, size comparison as you can tell it is the same file it is literally the same file only this one because i had to print it on my uh six inch printer and this was printed on an eight inch printer i didn't have to scale it down to fit so i'll even turn it around so you can see that even the drainage holes are exactly the same this is the exact same model okay the exact same the exact same model um and best birthday present ever next to my dad you're the best cup from my daughter thank you Molly Bear darling it sits with pride on my desk and fills me with yummy lovey coffee uh, which stops dad from doing very very mean things to not so mean people um, but yeah this is going to be uh absolutely a fun build to do uh, it really is and it also means I'll be able to start working on some of my like I said some of my conflict stuff I even found a whole bunch of ooh, sorry about that I even found a box full of models that are yeah, so this is a 3D print of a Yug Panzer II. This is a solid print. Solid. Solid resin print. It weighs a good almost a pound. It's fucking heavy. Um, and it's got some extra parts that I 3D printed and attached on it, like jerry cans, things of that nature. Um, I've even done a, a custom. German captured KV-2 Again, this will be an artillery piece in uh, bolt action And then we've got some uh, See I've also got some cut and cut uh, half track This is this is an actual uh, half track model that I bought from from bolt action But I also have the STL files for regular ones. So I'll, I may be able, be able to do those one tiger tank but uh, 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 uh two tiger tanks uh, 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 uh. so there's that and I've even got an old I got a little tiny tiger too uh, this is actually not to scale of course uh, but I will be able to actually print now tiger twos to scale so <laughs> I'll be happy with that but it also means that this little tiger is on its way it's going to be going to Texas to my uh, to my son in Texas uh, then we've got ah here we go this is my 3d printed kv2 um, this is entirely 3d printed with the exception of the turret the turret came from a kit oh no wait no no even the turret's 3d printed so there we go including the commander and the cupola cupola it's 3d printed uh, we've got uh, two 3d printed uh, panzer threes Here's one, and here's two Panzer threes uh, with uh, 3D printed turrets. This is a Panzer IV turret, uh, which I'm going to be printing the Panzer IV chassis to. Uh, there's the other Panzer three turret. So like I said, I've got a ton of... of, of tanks ready to roll and then of course I've got an actual regular Panzer 3 so um, I've got a huge German uh, armoured division uh, ranging from Africa Corps to uh, uh, 
feckin' Africa Corps going all the way to uh, Eastern Front. Um, there you go. It's, oh, my Marder's barrel broke. Okay, I'll have to fix that. That's my Marder with a broken barrel. Yeah. I can f I'll fix that. Of course, here's a Panther. I also have the files for Panthers as well, so I'll be able to make print more Panthers. So that'll be fun. There's my There you go, Morty. Found him. Don't know what he's doing in here. Probably telling everyone off. Um, and of course, we've got Shermans and Fireflies in here as well for the British and the Americans. So, like I said, guys, I've got a ton of models. Um, now I'll be able to 3D print. Um, my German army, my German tanks to scale to the correct scale, so I'll be happy about that. Uh, I'll be able to keep my Panzer threes. I'll be able to keep my Panzer fours. Of course, there's the, like I said, there's the German captured KV one. Yes, the Germans did capture KV ones, T thirty fours, KV twos, um, BT sevens. They it, it, Germany would capture and use everything and anything they could get their hands on. Not because their stuff wasn't good. It's because know thy enemy. Um, golden rule of war. Know thy enemy. Um, and so, yeah. That's, that's what a lot of, you know, German commanders did. They captured allied weapons and used them. Made use of them. Uh, saved on logistics. You know, s s armies march on their stomach. Tanks march on their petrol tanks. You know? And so, yeah, uh, am I happy with the printer? Yeah, absolutely. I haven't seen how bad it is maintenance-wise yet because, like I said, I haven't taken it apart. I will hear uh, in the next clip you'll see me and I'll be able to sh you know, drain the, the VAT tank, take a look at the FEP sheet, and I'll even show you the FEP sheet um, so you'll be able to see... Uh, um, you know the size difference because I'll show you both FEP sheet sizes so you'll be able to see the difference between the FEP sheet sizes so yeah guys until then I will see you in the next clip and we're back and not only are we back but we're back with two FEP sheets and I want to explain to you the size difference pretty much okay this is my old okay and I mean old, hello, old uh, um, five and a half to six and a half inch screen. Okay, the only difference is is the vats are identical, the FEP sheets are identical. The only difference is the LCD screen is got a little little like half inch length either side extension. That's it. Everything else is identical. Versus my new one. Are you starting to understand the size difference? I can legit put one inside the other. That is the size difference. This is my new one. I did notice a small flaw um, in this, and that is there is no resin drain. Uh, what I mean by that is, if you look, one of the corners, there's always a designated corner in your vat as a designated pour point, so you can pour the excess resin out. There is not one on this. So that's a bit of a downside. That is that that is a bit of a downer. That's a bit of a Debbie downer. Upside is... Upside is that we are ready to print again. There is my filter. There is literally nothing, nothing in there. The resin was a hundred percent clean, and that to me. 
blows my mind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to resin back away. I'm going to go to settings. Tools, manual, home. That is how quiet it is. It is moving, as you can see. Like I said, the actual movement of the bed, quiet as a mouse. Quiet as a, a, ch as a church mouse pissing on cotton. But the extractor fan, whoo, sounds like a play PlayStation 4 trying to take off. Jim, dear Lord, does it sound like a jet engine. But, do I have any regrets purchasing this? Absolutely not. None. Would I recommend it to someone else? Yes. Um, I would recommend that you get the Vox Lab variant, which has got the, 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 the grey and orange, not the black and orange. It's a different operating screen too. It's a white screen with blue buttons. That's another way you can tell if you've got an original one or an upgraded one. This is the original one using the original firmware. Um, like I said, I think there is a firmware upgrade for it. I don't know yet. Um, so I will take a look. And if there is, I will update the firmware. But, oh, this. This is going to be a wonderful addition to my 3D print farm. Like I said, my old 5 inch is now regulated to a parts machine. Um, because everything parts wise, physical parts wise, for the 5 inch will fit the, the Vox Lab 6 inch. With the exception of the screens, of course. Because the screens are, well, one's a 5 inch, one's a 6 inch. Um, so I do need to get a, a new 6 inch screen as well for that. So I'm going to grab one while they're going to be in stock. Uh, and I'll be back to knocking out customers, prints, builds, and projects. Uh, I'll also be starting new projects here on the YouTube channel. Um, I'm only, I think, like 510 subscribers away from 500. And to me, that's a big deal. And like I said, I want to say thank you to all of you guys you guys are amazing you guys are slowly helping me get out of my depression and my funk and everything else and i know this is going to be this is a has been a lengthy uh, video review uh, product review of, of the the uh, uh, flash forge 8.9 uh, photo uh, but uh, that's photo with a p but um yeah i just i wanted you guys to have something to see what before during and after and what it takes to get it done uh, so yeah i will see you uh, in the next video guys uh, if you guys want to see me print something leave a comment down below uh, as long as it's not too tongue-in-cheek um, but uh, yeah i will gladly that was my compressor burping i will gladly uh, add it in and um I will be working on a customer's Colossus burst here. Uh, it's on. It's 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 on the painting desk to do next. Uh, after I finished the uh, Nurgle possessed uh, Chaos Knight, um, I do like how it's turning out. I'm doing a separate video series for that. That video uh, is, is, I've got about. Already, I've got close to 14 hours worth of footage to go through. Uh, I'm pretty sure you guys don't want to see a 14 hour video, but uh, and I've also got to record the uh, voiceover narration for it. So that's going to be a joy. Uh, there's a couple of bloopers I'm going to leave in on that, uh, where I knock over a paint pot and a few other things. <laughs> I'm going to leave those in. But. Uh, yeah, once once I've knocked out that chaos night, it, it it's it's ignited a fire in me to get at least one army done, and it's gonna be my death guard. 
So the next model up after him is going to be uh, after I've done this this chaos, this chaos knight. It's going to be the rank and file, um, and then I'm leaving Mortarian for last. The reason why I'm leaving Mortarian for last is because as I'm doing the rank and file, I'm going to learn more tricks and tips and little hacks and whatnot, and I want to do. I don't want to do the best ever paint job on a Mortarian ever. That's never going to happen. But I want to give it my best, if that makes sense. I'm not saying I'm, I'm leaving leaving him in primer or grey plastic or anything like that. That's not it at all. It's just I want to do the best paint job I can do. And the way that's going to happen is over time and you've got to you're your own worst critic For anyone out there who paints miniatures uh, tanks model kits you name it you're your own worst critic uh, you really are you are your own worst critic so um, don't be afraid to show off your stuff I, I watch uh, uh, people on twitch who paint miniatures I send them pictures of my stuff all the time I get positive feedback from them um, some of them are like, you know, don't give up your day job, you know, and then some are like, just work on this, work on that, get better brushes, uh, get higher quality paints, uh, thin your paint a little bit more, you know, just, they, they do give friendly advice, and for that I will, and for that I will forever be in their debt, uh, because they are uh, cool people, uh, so yeah, anyway, I've been ranting. Uh, I'm sorry for that guys. Uh, I will end this video uh, with a stay safe, have fun, and uh, I'll see you in the next video guys. Keep your flying, keep your enemies dying. Cobra Commander is out.